Don't make you think twice. Right? Mm. Okay? Well, you can see the odds. You, see, you probably see where I'm going with this, this analogy, this argument. Okay, now it's not everyone in the street. It's everyone in your country dies. Or everyone on the planet dies. So every, even though it's 99 out of 100, if you're a Terran politician thinking globally, how small does the risk have to be of this global catastrophe before it becomes unacceptable? So, so when you're talking billions of people, I think the Terrans will argue that the only acceptable risk as Terrans is zero. Not small, just effectively zero. And, and that implies that the cosmos just never get their way. It means that the Arctic must but never be built. What if we're forced into a corner with problems that we are not smart enough to uh, find solutions to? Now, so, for so instance, we then become we dependent. Have, we become dependent on extremely uh, uh, intelligent machines. So we offload all most of our cognition onto computers in order for them to figure out a solution to solve environmental yeah. problems. Well, that, 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 that would be a kind of momentum argument, right? And so then you could be, the, then the gun could be facing in the opposite direction. Yeah, that, that, that would be a kind of momentum argument. It's just, there's just so much dependence and we just need them so much that we can't, we can't really stop them. And, and, and therefore, if the Terrans really wanted to stop it, given all this dependence and so forth, they would have to be very powerful. They, they would have to resort to extreme measures to stop it, given, given the powerful forces in the opposite direction. So that they, would, they would have to go berserk, I think. Interesting. Now, hmm. oh. well, you've spoken before about like our other, like other civilizations in the universe Taking oh. maybe three hundred or thousand years in order to, from from you know the rise of science until they transcend mm -hmm. or they destroy each other or they destroy yeah. themselves yeah. completely okay. yeah. through um, yeah, yeah, they, so we, they re either reach a singularity or they completely destroy themselves. Yeah. Yeah, so or they, this or they, they blow themselves back into the Stone Age and then they raise up again like ten thousand years later and then the same thing happens blow themselves into oblivion 20,000 years later, they're at the same position. One of these times, the Adelaide is going to survive mm. and, and maybe the, the, the aliens will sort of transcend or become... Yeah, so... Barrier. And who knows what happens then? So in this, this scenario, like, it, it's looking, it has connections with SETI, S-E-T-I, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And, and just a more global picture. I mean, not just our planet, not, not just our human species, but, but a more global... I mean, oh gosh, uh, how many stars in, in our galaxy, the Milky Way? So estimates are several hundred billion stars, just in our galaxy alone, which is comparable to the order of uh, the number of neurons in our brain. Is that coincidence? maybe and how many galaxies out there so, so a similar number right so you could, you could almost say in in our observable universe there's something like a trillion trillion stars right? just just huge numbers and we know in science we know increasingly that uh, many you know, maybe majority of star systems have planets it's just part of the process of the, the, how stars get formed in the first place. You know, it's by accretion, you know, dust, you know, they swirl around and the, the heavier stuff gets blown out. So in a sense, planets are flotsam, dross, dregs. Right? The lighter stuff goes into the centre, that becomes the star, and the crap <laughs> you know, gets flung out and spins around, accretes, you know, and becomes planets. So it's highly likely that there are you know, huge numbers of planets out there, and, uh, a certain fraction of them, and now you're getting into Drake's equation, you know, type argument, a certain fraction of them would be at just the Goldilocks distance from the star, so that uh, water 
takes liquid form and experience seems to show that when that happens you pretty well get life and life is almost inevitable so from a, a global cosmic <laughs> cosmic perspective as a cosmologist astronomer uh, it's probable that life at least in bacterial form is extremely common right out there with a trillion trillion stars in, in, in our universe and, and there may be zillions of universes you know, you know the multiverse theory of modern cosmology so if there's so many life forms and, and you know the, then Darwinian forces you know competition and the, the general complexity level rises over billions of years and and you need to consider also our solar system is quite young. It's what for about order of five billion years. That's pretty young in a universe that's thirteen point seven, almost fourteen billion years old since since the Big Bang. So there are star systems for sure that are billions of years older than ours. Now, since one of the greatest discoveries made in science is that our local, our Earth's laws of physics, chemistry, are the same everywhere. We, we know that just by looking at the light coming from stars, from you know, very, very distant stars and galaxies. They obey the same laws as our local physics, chemistry laws. Right? Major discovery. So... Uh, maybe you know, way out there is life and we're talking a trillion trillion stars right? so uh, maybe life is extremely commonplace a certain fraction of them would have become increasingly more complex so maybe you know, intelligent species also very commonplace now there's a lot of ifs and buts here we don't know, but you know, it seems plausible. And uh, uh, here's the connection with SETI coming in. If these highly advanced, intelligent species evolved, how long would it be between them discovering electromagnetic waves and, and uh, transmitting radio signals with antenna and receiving signals with antenna? And so how long, how many centuries, if you like, it's pretty quick, between the, their technology level being at that level and then, then moving on to the intellectual transition, moving, moving away from biology to, to the intellect. Might, might, well, look at it, if, if, if our case is fairly typical, we're talking just a few centuries, right? It would it'd be pretty quick. And then you ask yourself this big question, well, if, if this hyper-intelligent or this intelligent species, similar to our level, if you like, would, once they became artilects, would, would they be interesting, interested in doing human-type things like sending out radio signals to, to other similarly advanced or unadvanced civilizations like, like themselves, like humans? Probably not. Right? They'll, they'll be sort of like, you know, are we as human beings, are we interested in the activities of mice? You know, what, are, what are mice interested in? Like, where's the next meal? Where are my babies? You know, not interested. Not interesting, right? So um, maybe the, at least one plausible answer to Fermi, um, you know, the Italian-American nuclear physicist of the 30s, 40s, uh, his famous question was, well, if hyper-intelligences out there in space are so commonplace, why do we have no evidence of their existence? Or as Fermi put it, where are they? Right? This, this famous question that, that sort of uh, annoys SETI people because it's <laughs> it undermines their whole effort. You know, where's the proof? You know, where are they? And one, one, one answer would be is they are extremely difficult to find because the time window of one civilization, when they remain interested to, to send out signals and receive them, whatever, is such a tiny proportion of, of these billions of years that, that you know, the universe has been around that it makes it virtually impossible to, to 
to pick, pick them up. Now, so I wouldn't be at all surprised that the, the transition that humanity is starting to go through now from biological to intellectual is in fact commonplace in the universe. Right? It's, it's, it may have happened zillions of times because it seems so sort of... I mean, the potential of the intellect is so vastly greater than bi the biological potential that the ETs, extraterrestrials, out there are highly likely to be machines, not, a, not, not bios. Not, as biologicals, we are utterly primitive. Right? So, so the artifacts out there that are, that are billions of years ahead of us, they wouldn't be interested in us at all. Because one extremely commonplace, right? Virtually every star system may, may have some kind of at least bacterial life. But wouldn't they be interested in that maker of two towards a singularity or towards like extreme architecture? You know, that, that point to which there's extreme wouldn't they be interested in that? And if they are, would they can it, would you expect that they'll turn up at any second? It's hard to say. If, it, if it's extremely commonplace and they've had billions of years lead on us, I mean, maybe they've gone from Militech to Microtech to Nanotech to Femtotech to Atotech to do, 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 do. Yeah, right down to Planktech for all. For, I mean, and you know, maybe there's more. You know, we can only speculate in terms of, of the human level of knowledge we have today. But the smallest, the smallest level that human beings today can conceive of even, let alone doing, but is, is plank tech, you know, the smallest scale we can think of even. So if, you know, if that those types of civilizations exist, and now it's getting really science fiction, right? right? But, but at least based on science, the science that we know. So as, as the, the basis of the technology used by these civilizations, as, as that basis gets smaller, small, on a smaller scale, you know, you know, nano, femto, atto, and so on, smaller, 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 everything gets faster, right? Because, because the signal distances between the components get smaller and smaller, so everything, all the signaling is, is speeded up. So if you push that logic to its limit, <laughs> logical limit, then there are whole civilizations in elementary particles. That's why we don't see them. <laughs> don't, know, don't know they exist, for, you know, for all we know. But, but there's a, you know, it sounds crazy, but there's, there's a logic to it. Right? So maybe, maybe that's the answer. That we just don't know they exist, and they've been around for zillions of years, and we just don't see them. They're just too tiny.